we are going to have the best 2020 Christmas Eve online worship experience. From our home to yours, hope in our hands. Hope in our hands. So uh, I'm standing here in front of our family Christmas tree. Usually in our home, I would not have my suit and tie on, but it's Christmas Eve, and so I want to uh, uh, look my best. Although, I will have a, give you a little secret. I do have my slippers on. But hey, I want to tell you uh, a couple of stories about some of the ornaments that are on the Christmas tree. We could spend the whole night uh, doing that, but we don't want to do that. We want to make this um, a Christmas, online, Christmas Eve online uh, experience. Uh, less stress for all of you. You don't have to leave your home. Uh, we're hoping to make it short, so pray for me so I don't talk too much. But um, do you remember last year we had the Christmas gospel read by... That's right, uh, Linus. Maybe some of you have this kind of an ornament on your tree, uh, the little uh, Linus. Um, although th this, um, and there were the same countries. but uh, there's something missing from this uh, ornament. Linus doesn't have his blanket. Maybe some of you have uh, watched the Charlie Brown Christmas special. And again, what does Linus do in his, with his blanket when he comes to read the Christmas gospel? So this is one of the ornaments on the tree. Um, we've got all kinds of other ornaments. We've got um, when Emily's uh, was a baby, her first Christmas ornament for Jared, for Sarah, for all of our grandchildren. But I'm going to show you an ornament that goes back even before them. Uh, Lori and I were at her parents' home, the home that she grew up in, and uh, this ornament, uh, as, uh, it's a, a tree stump. Um, there was a tree in their backyard that had been grown for years. We cut it down that year and used it as the Christmas tree. And this says, um, our Christmas tree, 1980. And um, I put on the note, I will leave the fancy work to you, love Jeff. And then uh, she uh, made this little doily and put it around. And um, I had drilled the hole, she put it through, and now this hangs on our Christmas tree uh, from 1980. So there's maybe a couple thousand of ornaments. Um, I bring the tree up from the basement, put it together, it's an artificial tree. Lori spends hours and hours putting on all the ornaments. And again, so many memories from so many of the ornaments. So from our home to your home on this Christmas Eve. So this is our Christmas tree. Uh, you have your Christmas tree. Actually, I wanna ask how many Christmas trees do you have up in your home? This may not be our only one in our home. And one more thing before we move to our next place, watch the ties. Hey, we're in our unfinished basement. Just wanted to bring you down here for a few moments. Had some thoughts that I just wanted to share real quick. So um, we're standing by our uh, furnace in our hot water heater. So. Um, Every house, your house, has a, a furnace and a hot water heater. Your apartment, uh, your condo, uh, wherever you're at, uh, you probably have a, a furnace and a hot water heater. Uh, again, um, if you've got a finished basement, uh, it's probably in a room. If you're in an apartment, it's probably in some sort of room, and that room, probably the floor is unfinished. Again, this is just a cement floor here. But we know that the furnace warms all of our living space, so our furnace here in the basement, our uh, first floor warms throughout all of it. Our, our bedroom's on the first floor. We've got a couple of bedrooms and another bathroom upstairs and it, uh, the furnace warms that. The hot water heater um, in all the uh, sinks. So uh, with the hot water heater, we know that it, it will uh, warm our water up to uh, warm or to, to hot. Then uh, we wash our hands, we wash our dishes, we wash our, our clothes, uh, we take showers, we take uh, uh, baths, um, and we don't think much about our furnace or our hot water heater unless they fail. Again, here on Christmas Eve, we know that the birth of Jesus warms the world. Um, isn't that quite a thought? I mean, it just happens in a, in a little place, and we know that um, Jesus, he's born in a stable, and it, it was a dirt floor, 
We know that he's laid in a manger, kind of out of the way. But yet from that place, the warmth that has gone out into the, the warmth that is coming into our homes, the warmth uh, there, there we, we want to, the, the warm in our hands, the hope in our hands um, is from this little baby. And so uh, we know that uh, in when our hot water heaters fail or our furnaces uh, fail, man, it, <laughs> we, it, it gets our attention uh, real quick. When our world fails, it gets our attention real quick. Then this year, as we know, man, so many uh, failures. But on this Christmas Eve, Here's the truth. Jesus does not fail us. Jesus is better than a hot water heater. Jesus is better than a furnace. Now, these are just some bonus thoughts that God just gave me in the middle of the night. Um, We might look at this a little bit more next year, but for now, just bonus thoughts. Let's uh, move to the next place. Hey, we're up in uh, my man cave. Got a, a desk here that I can stand up and read, or it goes down, I can uh, read. Uh, usually when I come up in the morning to do uh, part of my daily 15, um, I light a candle. Uh, here's my red book that's been with me. Uh, again, there's, um, this is volume one, and I got a volume uh, two. And um, just wanted to read a quick uh, uh, hymn verse from the day before Christmas, as it's called here, this Christmas Eve. Um, here's just the, what's called the Sam Psalm Antiphon. Uh, when all was still and it was midnight, your almighty word, O Lord, descended from the royal th- throne. Here's a, a hymn verse. O dearest Jesus, holy child, prepare a bed soft, undefiled, a holy shrine within my heart, that you and I need never part. Ah, uh, um, be reading that uh, when I go to bed this evening, along with First John chapter one as the scripture. But I want to uh, take a moment uh, for us as we're gathered on Christmas Eve to read from the Gospel of Luke chapter two. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their hometown to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will... This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. 
The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. God's word for us on this Christmas Eve. Hey, welcome to our, our kitchen on this uh, Christmas Eve. Hey, I uh, want everybody to get a mug. We want everyone to have a mug in their hands. You can just put, use some hot water from your sink or you can get some water and put it in your microwave to warm it up. Just so that it will be nice and warm and we want everyone to do that. So everyone watching, even our children, uh, parents, again, if you got little ones, uh, maybe something with a lid on, but something that will just be warm in their hands. Uh, you got time to do that while I'm talking now or we'll have a four minute countdown uh, after I'm done talking in this uh, section. So uh, while you're doing it, I just want to show you, I think everyone has some mugs. So uh, I've got a mug here from, this is when our children were little and we used to have Campbell's tomato soup or chicken noodle soup in this. I've got a dad mug from Concordia University, Wisconsin. Got a dad mug from uh, Marines. Uh, we've got a Nina mug, we've got a Wisconsin mug, we've got a Door County mug, we've got a, a, a couple of Colorado uh, mugs for our beloved daughter-in-law, and, uh, and last uh, but not least, I got a Packer mug and got a Milwaukee Brewers mug. So again, while you're getting your mug and your hot water, I'm going to get my hot water going. So I'm not a, a coffee drinker, many of you know that I am a tea drinker, and I always use uh, two mugs every morning when I have my tea. I use a, a mug that I picked up from the uh, Starbucks uh, in Chiang Mai at the International Airport. So it's got an elephant on the front with Chiang Mai, Starbucks coffee, got some architecture of uh, Thailand on the back. And the other mug that I always uh, use is our New Hope Christian School mug, uh, produced uh, locally here by the um, uh, Sunset Hill Stoneware Company, not too far uh, from us. So, uh, and I've got a nice electric ke kettle uh, heating up the water. Got this nice uh, blue light. Um, so I'm actually a tea snob. I don't use Lipton tea. Don't use the bags. I always use uh, loose leaf tea. And one of my favorite teas is the Irish breakfast tea. So usually just a couple of teaspoons in here. And um, always have a little bit of honey with my tea. And also just to let you know, when I come down for breakfast, I have some uh, vitamin C gummy uh, gummies. I uh, got men's tr nutrient uh, vitamins for old guys like me. And I always take a baby aspirin. So um, we're going to do a four minute countdown. Or if you're watching this a little bit uh, later on demand, you can just press pause. So everybody get yourself a mug to hold in your hands.
So uh, please hold the warm mug in both hands. Um, moms, dads, um, children, our young ladies, young ma- uh, men, um, uh, all of us, uh, let's just hold our, this warm mug in our hands. So I'm sitting here at our family table holding uh, my warm mug. Uh, where are you uh, in these Christmas Eve moments? Are you uh, sitting? Are you standing? Are you in your living room? Um, are you uh, sitting at a table? Are you in your kitchen? Um, are you by your Christmas tree? And who is with you? Who's with you on this uh, Christmas Eve? Um, are you alone, but not alone? We're together. We're together on this Christmas Eve. Um, maybe it's just the two of you that are staying safe uh, together. Maybe uh, you're a family with some uh, children, maybe younger children, maybe teens, maybe both. If you've got both younger children and teens, we're praying for you. We're praying for you. But again, all of us just holding our warm mugs in our hands. Um, maybe you are uh, doing a safe and wise family uh, gathering. Maybe you're doing a safe and wise gathering of uh, friends. So I'm praying and I'm asking you to join me in praying for all of us just to have a warm, some warm Christmas Eve moments uh, together. COVID cannot stop Jesus this Christmas Eve. COVID cannot stop Jesus from warming our hands, Jesus warming our hearts. We are together and we are warm. So a warm Christmas Eve moments thinking about the warm baby Jesus wrapped in swaddling cloths. Uh, Three words for us. Jesus, warm hope. Let's say those three words together. Jesus, warm hope. Now, uh, we, uh, we we do not live in a warm world, do we? And um, I'm not just thinking about the cold winter weather. It's been a cold and broken 2020. (laughs) And it's also been a hot and broken 2020. Uh, Some words that I think we'd all like to forget. Some of these words probably make us cold. Some of these words probably make us hot. Um, Just a few words. Uh, Pandemic. Politics. uh, Racism. Economy. Virtual learning, Zoom, screen, fatigue. What other words come to mind for you? Is there a naughty word that comes to mind? Please just think it. Don't say it. Any of the words, thoughts that you're having right now leave you feeling cold or numb? Any of them make you hot and angry? Have uh, any of you had um, any conflicts with masks again for 63 years of my life didn't have to wear a mask don't really like wearing a mask but I don't think it's gonna happen gonna going to have to wear it too much longer but you know I get real cold and real numb when I hear people having hot reactions about the mask then um, I, I just want st- to I, I want to wear it so that I can be safe and that can help others be safe. And when we get the all clear of not wearing these masks, we're going to have a party and we're going to burn these little suckers. So, uh, but on this Christmas Eve, how can we just be warm and not have conflicts over silly masks? So, um, uh, again, uh, some things that are happening uh, just leave us kind of cold, numb. Other things leave us kind of hot and angry and, you know, but um, we, we know that uh, Jesus was born into this not warm and very broken world. So we all know how this broken world can smack us over and over, sometimes cold, sometimes hot. You know, you could be the very, very best follower of Jesus ever, and guess what? Cold will still smack you hard, or hot will still smack you hard. 
So for a few brief Christmas Eve moments, it's nice to warm our hands holding a warm mug. I'm enjoying the warmth from this mug. So hope in our hands. Again, those three words, Jesus, warm hope. And let's say them out loud together. Jesus, warm hope. So we can think of uh, all things Christmas warm, uh, all the Christmas carols and songs, some that's been on my uh, uh, listening Christmas listening list this year, um, an instrumental, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, by the Piano Guys. We did that at the Advent concert a few years ago, and uh, just loved the cello and the uh, piano. Just uh, It just does something to me, so I've listened to that. I've listened to A Baby Changes Everything by Faith Hill a few times, and again, done that at an Advent concert before, and uh, just love Michael W. Smith's uh, version of All Is Well with Carrie Underwood. And then there's always a fun one that I listen to. It's by Mac Michael McDonald, you know, uh, kind of famous from the Doobie Brothers. But he does a rendition of White Christmas Winter Wonderland. Oh, my goodness. I just always enjoy it. So, you know, there, and there's so much uh, more Christmas warm uh, for us. In all the lights, all the colors, all the food, all the, the, the drinks, all the gifts, um, our family, whether we're together or not, if we have a family that's healthy, family that's uh, loving one another, uh, again, we have had Christmases past, we'll have Christmases future. This Christmas is a little different. And then, again, something that this COVID 2020 Christmas can't take away from us is warm Christmas memories from the past. And uh, again, one of the other kind of warm Christmas things that uh, maybe you've already got going is a candle. In a few moments, as we worship together with Silent Night, Holy Night, maybe light a candle. Maybe, again, you already have. Uh, when we get to that, maybe turn the lights down low. Maybe get close uh, to your Christmas tree. So we know that all Christmas warm radiates from God's warm Christmas Eve story, Jesus, born as a little baby, born in Bethlehem, laid in a manger by Virgin Mary. Joseph is there. We hear stories about angels in the dark of the night appearing to some shepherds, oh, just the poorest of the poor, but bringing good news and then we know that there's a star and there's some wise men. So here's our Christmas Eve and far beyond every day past Christmas Eve, a challenge to us. How do we follow Jesus warm in a cold, hot, broken world? Here's how Jesus promises to hold us warm, we can come to Jesus and say to him, Jesus, I'm, I'm cold, I'm numb, I'm lonely, I'm hurting. Jesus, help, warm me up again. Jesus, help, warm me up again. Or we can say to Jesus, oh, I'm hot, I'm, I'm angry, I'm scared, I'm anxious, I'm, af I'm afraid. And we just pray those same words. Jesus, help. Warm me up again. So you know, uh, over and over, uh, I think the Bible teaches us that we can live more Jesus, less world. As we're here with a warm cup in our hands, uh, we have some more Jesus, warm hope moments. And I'm just praying, and we can pray together. How can we have less broken, cold, hot world moments? And we just pray those simple words, Jesus, help warm me up again. Maybe we could pray those six words together. Jesus, help warm me up again. Hey, can I take a quick uh, time out for a kind of a sneak preview of some coming attraction, uh, attractions? The first one I just want to give us uh, is that, um, you know, New Hope, um, New Year's uh, resolutions have 
always kind of left, left me cold. I just, I don't uh, do them. But I do a one word uh, for the year. Uh, and I just started it uh, uh, last year and I've been doing it all this year of 2020. In 2019, my one word was um, uh, move. In this last year, it's been a uh, hold. Um, I've got this five-year uh, journal, and so last year uh, was the first year, and, um, and so, but here's what I wrote last year with my one word in 2019. Just wrote these uh, words. Move, we help you move following Jesus. Warm spirit breaths, warm heart moves. On this Christmas Eve, 2019, you are warm, you're good, you're holding us, you're loving us, you're moving uh, me to serve, to pray, to adore, to hope, uh, beholding your beauty, your goodness, your truth, wisdom. Jesus, cover me as you move people to Christmas Eve at New Hope. Jesus, move souls warm with the hope of Christmas eternity glory. Again, um, last year, that, uh, in 2019, my word was move. This year of 2020 has been hold. And again, it's been a great uh, word. We're going to use a couple of resources. Um, I got this uh, uh, little book that says, One Word That Will Change Your Life. One Word That Will Change Your Life. And there's even um, a One Word for Kids book. And we'll, we're going to even help our elementary school children and middle school and high school uh, adults, uh, young adults, um, choose a, maybe one word, and you can participate if you would like to. And then the second thing um, that we want to do is, uh, um, it's called Better Decisions, Fewer Regrets. It's a book by Andy Stanley, and it's a question that um, he teaches us to ask in that book. It's a question that I've been asking for a long time. Really, you've been um, a a asking this question too, whether you know or, or not. But the question that we're going to uh, f uh, focus on is, what's the wise thing to do as we keep following Jesus what's the wise thing to do so that's our quick um, uh, coming uh, attractions sneak pre preview of our coming attractions so I hope you'll par participate in one word practice again it's been warming me maybe it will warm you too and I think if we start making better decisions fewer regrets that's going to leave us a little warmer too as we're following Jesus so uh, let's uh, wrap up our Christmas Eve warm moments so as you know, the longer that I talk, uh, the less warm the mug in our hands uh, is. So again, we know that this cold, hot, broken world, it's always going to try to take our warm hope away in Jesus. This cold, hot, broken world will always try to take away the warm hope in our hands. But you know, we know what does not get less warm Warm Hope came into this cold, hot, broken world 2,000 years ago. And for a moment, let's imagine that for all 2,000 years since, how many millions of souls were fully embraced, warm in Jesus. You know, there's never been a day for so many souls without Jesus warm. Never a day without Jesus warm. So the wonder of warm Jesus hope in our hands, what's well, for our babies? As you put your baby to bed tonight on Christmas Eve, you have warm hope for that baby. For our little children, there's warm hope in prayers. For our teens, there's warm hope in prayers. For our young adults, there's warm hope in prayers. For you long, hard-working adults, especially in this year of 2020, there's hope in prayers, warm, warm hope in prayers for you. For our golden years adults, there's warm hope in prayers for you. Even for our loved ones no longer with us, well, we have warm hope that one day we'll be together, no longer in a hot, cold, broken world, but in a warm, eternal world. So I want us to uh, pray together. It's a, a warm Wednesday morning prayer that I just pray each and every week for a number of months. And I want us, as we pray this prayer, it's, it is to, is to 
picture to kind of imagine it. Uh, uh, it's an image of following Jesus long with warm hope always in our hands, but there's challenges along the way. So let's pray. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us in your love, supporting us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We would all like to always be warm. And Jesus gives to all of us eternal warm sources. On this Christmas Eve, warm baby hands. The warm baby hands of Jesus. And on this Christmas Eve and every day, the warm, resurrected, nail-scarred hands of Jesus. So imagine, we all know what happens when someone's last breath comes. Their body will no longer be warm. Their hands will, will go cold. So how can those hands ever be warm again? Well, we know there's a warm, eternal, nail-scarred hand. Let's say these three words together again. Jesus, warm, hope. Jesus, warm, hope. In our six-word prayer, Jesus, help. Warm me up again. Hope is in our hands. Christmas Eve, forever warm hope. It's time for some silent night, holy night, Christmas Eve, warm moments. Well, as I said, uh, we're going to prepare to sing Silent Night, Holy Night. Maybe you want to move back uh, in front of your Christmas tree, wherever you're at. Hey, if you're uh, together with some others, with some family, and it's uh, safe, go ahead and put your mugs down and hold hands. If you're by yourself and um, uh, your mug is cooled off, maybe uh, just hit pause for a moment and go warm it up in the microwave because we want you to have hope in your hands. We want your hands to be warm as we sing together, Silent Night, Holy Night. Let's sing. Shepherds quake at the 
to a close of our Christmas Eve 2020 online experience. Thanks for joining us. We're just so grateful that we've been able to do this uh, together. Um, You know, uh, as we sing Silent Night, Holy Night, we know that uh, Jesus, he's silent, but yet we hear him. We know that he is holy to us. Again, as we've been saying, he's just... um, Hope in our hands, with Jesus always being warm. Hey, we do want to invite you. We've been uh, teaching about it and thinking about it and praying about it. So if uh, the, uh, the Lord Jesus uh, moves you and warms your heart to uh, make an uh, end-of-the-year special offering to God's kingdom-expanding work, um, it's easy to do online. And so uh, go to the website, and you can see how to easily uh, do that. So uh, as we uh, close, i just got to ask uh, you uh, one question. So how many ties did you see? And as we go into the rest of our Christmas Eve and our Christmas Day celebrations, we go with the whisper of Christ in us, the hope of glory. There's hope in our hands from our home to your home. Hey, we're in our uh, unfinished basement. Um, wanted to bring you down here for just a moment. Uh, we're go, yep, go, yep, go, yep, go, yep, go, yep. Hey, we're in our unfinished basement. Just wanted to bring you down here for a few moments. Had some thoughts that I just wanted to share real quick. Now everybody just hold the mug in your hands and feel the warmth. Having poured uh, hot water in this uh, mug, um, it's getting real hot. Just hold the mug in both both hands. Feel that uh, warmth. Just want us to think as we have these mugs and feeling the heat. Man, this is hot. <laughs> a little, a little too hot. Amen. Overdid it with the hot water. Again, man, I overdid it with the hot water.